Welcome, everyone. My name is Lucy Fromowitz, and I'm the Vice Provost Students at York University. As this meeting is virtual, and we are not all gathered in the same space, I recognize that this land acknowledgement may not be for the territory that you are currently on. We ask if this is the case, you take the responsibility to acknowledge the traditional territory you are on and the current treaty holders. As a member of the York University community, I recognize that many Indigenous nations have long-standing relationships with the territories upon which York University campuses are located that precede the establishment of York University. York University acknowledges its presence on the traditional territory of many Indigenous nations. The area known as Takaronto has been caretaken by the Anishinaabek Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat. It is now home to many First Nation, Inui, and Métis communities. We acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. This territory is subject of the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Belt Covenant an agreement to peaceably share and care for the Great Lakes region. Thank you for joining us as we acknowledge the National Day of Remembrance and Action on Violence Against Women. December 6 was declared by Canada's Parliament as the National Day of Remembrance and Action on Violence Against Women following the murder of 14 women at L'Ecole Polytechnique de Montréal on December 6, 1989. We are gathered virtually today to reflect upon this tragedy and to remember the 14 victims while also recognizing that this systemic issue continues to impact our society. In remembering the violence of this day in 1989, we must also reflect on the continuous violence affecting women until this day. This includes our indigenous communities, trans communities, as well as other marginalized groups affected by continued colonization, oppression, and patriarchy. We recognize that our audience are people with lives, histories, and struggles that we are not privy to 
and are not always aware of. Therefore, we want to take a moment to provide a content warning for all participants that this memorial will contain material on sexual violence, disclosures, as well as other topics that may invoke strong emotions. If you feel activated or overwhelmed by the event, we encourage you to prioritize what you need in the moment. If you need to take a break, please do so. We also recognize that there may be younger children in your surrounding area, and we encourage you to use headphones if they are available to you. If you require support, please contact the Center for Sexual Violence Response, Support, and Education, or any of the resources listed in our support slide. I would now like to call upon Amy Desjardins, who is the Knowledge Keeper at the Center for Indigenous Student Services, to provide remarks. Bonjour and greetings. On behalf of the Center for Indigenous Student Services, uh, staff and students, I bring you um, uh, some words of comfort on this National Day of Remembrance and Action on violence against women. Um, it's really important in our communities uh, when we're talking about um, uh, the safety and protection of women, um, because in our communities, women are, are life givers. They're the conduits that bring new life into the world and, uh, and guide our young from, from infancy and, and do all of that teaching. And so it's really important uh, for us to ensure that um, that our women are upheld and, and respected and cared for. And so I um, want to bring some words of, uh, of comfort and healing to the, the families and the um, loved ones uh, of those that lost their lives um, on this day. And in solidarity, I am... Uh, Letting you know that our hearts are with you, that uh, that our minds are one when it comes to um, the protection and, and care uh, and action that we need to take to ensure our spaces uh, of learning are safe and that uh, that uh, that you know that um, those of us uh, in community uh, continue to love and support. Uh, you and your families, and uh, and know that this day is so important to share those memories and those moments that we had uh, with your loved ones while they were here. Um, may we uh, continue to celebrate their lives in this way uh, so that their stories uh, and their wisdom can be shared uh, with everyone. So it's so important. Thank you so much for your work every single year to make sure this day happens. Jimmy Watch, uh, all my relations. Thank you, Amy, for opening our ceremony today. Today's ceremony is held with the support of President and Vice Chancellor Rhonda Lenton. I would like to welcome the President to provide important remarks. Hello, everyone. Bonjour, bonjour. Thank you all for taking the time to attend today's virtual event. Each year on December 6, York University joins communities across the country in commemorating the 14 young women whose lives were taken at Ecole Polytechnique in Montreal on December 6, 1989, in an act of gender based violence. Today, we remember these 14 women, in addition to all the other women whose lives have been lost in the face of violence and discrimination based on gender and gender identity. Gender-based violence has long been a pervasive issue, both in Canada and around the world. But there has been an alarming increase in the number of incidences reported since the onset of the pandemic. Here in Ontario, femicide, the killing of females, primarily by men, 
has increased by more than 84% in the first half of 2021 alone. Several factors have contributed to this increase, including job loss, families at home for long hours, the disproportionate number of women who have left the workforce during the pandemic, increasing their economic insecurity and trapping some women in living situations with potentially abusive partners. It is also important to acknowledge how the intersection of gender and race, sexuality, and socioeconomic status is a complicating factor in understanding the risk and the impact of gender-based violence. Indigenous women, for example, make up 12% of all of Canada's femicide victims, despite being only 5% of Canada's overall population. Similarly, LGBTQ plus community members including transgender women, represent a disproportionate percentage of victims of gender-based violence. As a sociologist who was hopeful that these issues were being taken up back in the 1980s, it can be very discouraging that we are still here today grappling with gender-based violence. It is nevertheless essential that we continue to work on eradicating gender-based violence, not just in Canada, but internationally, through our teaching, our research, and our advocacy. Today, I also want to emphasize that York University is here for you. Our Center for Sexual Violence Response, Support, and Education provides survivors with direct access to supports and also works to educate the community about sexual violence, respond to all forms of sexual violence with care and support, and empower survivors. Thank you once again for attending today's virtual event. I would now like to invite you to join us as we observe a moment of silence in memory of the 14 women whose lives were taken at Ecole Polytechnique 32 years ago today. Thank you. Merci, miigwech. On December 6, 1989, 13 female students and a female administrator at l'École Polytechnique de Montréal were murdered because they were women. The shocking impacts of their death led Parliament to designate December 6 as the National Day of Remembrance and Action on Violence Against Women. Today, we remember Annie saint Arnaud fourth year mechanical engineering student. Michel Richard, second year metallurgical engineering student. Anne-Marie Lemay, fourth year mechanical engineering student. Sonia Pelletier, fourth year mechanical engineering student. Geneviève Bergeron, second year civil engineering student. Barbara Dagneau, fourth year mechanical engineering student. Marise Lagagnère, school budget clerk. Nathalie Croteau, fourth year mechanical engineering student. Barbara klishnik Fideshvich, first year nursing student. Anne-Marie Edouard, first year chemical engineering student. Hélène Colgan, fourth year mechanical engineering student. Marie Leclerc, fourth year metallurgical engineering student. Annie Turcotte, first year metallurgical engineering student. Maud Aviernik, Second year metallurgical engineering student. We remember.
Thank you, President Lenton, and those from the Lausanne School of Engineering who created the Moving Rose animation for their continued presence and support. I would now like to call on Jane Goodyear, Dean of the Lausanne School of Engineering, to provide remarks. Hello, everyone. I'm Jane Goodyear, Dean of the Lausanne School of Engineering. I would like to thank you for joining us as we recognise the National Day of Remembrance and Action on Violence Against Women. Today, we reflect on the tragic impact of the December 6th, 1989 massacre at the École Polytechnique in Montreal. And we affirm our commitment to fight the hatred that led to this tragedy. It is critical that we honour the 14 women who lost their lives that day and commit to addressing gender-based violence so that we can build a future that is more equitable, inclusive and safe for all. For me and many of our students, this day will feel especially personal. After all, this is devastating and senseless act took place at an engineering school, a post-secondary institution where these young women were pursuing a higher education. There, they should have been safe and empowered to learn and reach their full potential, but instead, their lives were cut brutally short. Equity, diversity and inclusion are at the heart of our Lausanne School of Engineering. That's why today is a critical time for us to remember those who have experienced gender-based violence and whose lives have been lost to it. It's also a time for us to take action. We strive to create a more diverse community by reducing barriers, fostering a welcoming environment and providing a variety of supports that help individual community members reach their full potential. The SOND will continue to be a place where every learner, be it a student, faculty, staff, alumni or partner, can explore growth, opportunities and continually expand their unique path in a lifelong learning journey, regardless of their gender, race or socio-economic background. It takes people with different experiences and perspectives to address the local and global challenges that face us. It is these differences that provide a richness in Lausanne's culture, which enhances the teaching and research environment and ultimately the school's impact on the world. We must foster a community that is diverse and inclusive so that people from all backgrounds can safely play a role in identifying and designing these solutions. I encourage you to continue taking steps to address gender-based violence. Take the time to listen to survivors and speak up against harmful behaviour wherever you can. The next speaker you will hear is from Haya Mohammed, a space engineering student at La Sonde. Haya will be sharing her experience as a woman studying engineering. Hi everyone, my name is Haya and I'm a fourth year space engineering student studying at the Lausanne School of Engineering. This program has given me an incredible opportunity to meet and connect with many skilled minds. Entering university, I knew I would face many challenges. Engineering is not easy and the jump from high school to university requires you to be persistent and headstrong. As young and inexperienced students, getting used to a new environment and crafting your own identity at the same time can be very difficult. But finding my identity was not the only challenge that I faced during my academic journey. Through my time at school, there have been glaring examples of me and my male counterparts being treated differently. Group projects have sometimes been divided by gender, where men will take on the technical components and require the women to tackle the written portions. This divide between me and my classmates, and at times friends, made me feel the imposter syndrome. 
This is not something I want younger women to experience as they begin their academic journeys. The tragedy that happened at a call Polytechnique 30 years ago in Montreal sits very heavy in my heart, and I want to use my voice to inspire our academic leaders, my peers, and our community to be persistent in creating a setting that continues to embrace gender diversity. As we mourn their loss and remember their lives, I believe that we can find solace in the change that we have been able to accomplish over the last three decades in academic institutes as well as public spaces. That doesn't mean our work is done yet. There is a lot more that we can do to encourage and support women interested in pursuing STEM education. I personally got involved with the K2I Academy to do just that. Through my involvement with K2I, my main goal was to teach young women in the program how to use their talents and their skills to their advantage. It's my belief that a student performs best when they are able to take on responsibilities that complement their skill sets. I believe that a woman's unique sense of self is the strongest weapon that she has in challenging her limits. Among the K2I programs I have been involved with, there have been numerous initiatives that are connecting the gap between technical fields and the career prospects of young women. Through programs such as Black Esteem and Go Eng Girl, I had the chance to facilitate extracurricular teaching sessions for young students where an emphasis on the engineering framework was placed. Their skills in public speaking were supported throughout assigned projects which underwent revisions, culminating in a final presentation. It is my hope that every woman watching this knows that her differences and her unique voice are the valuable addition to any industry. Women should not shy away from fields that are traditionally dominated by men. A woman's involvement may very well propel a team to success. And let me leave you with this piece of advice. It is okay to be different from your peers and have your own unique identity. You still matter and you belong, even if you look different from others in the same space. Thank you, Dean Goodyear and Haya Mohammed for your contributions. I would now like to introduce Adizi Mumbawalya, Vice President, Campaigns and Advocacy for the York Federation of Students and representing the Glendon College student community, Katerina Blair. Hello everyone, my name is Adeze Balaja, my pronouns are she and her, and I'm the Vice President Campaigns and Advocacy of the York Federation of Students, the Undergraduate Students Union at York University. Today is December 6th, the National Day of Action on Remembrance on Violence Against Women. A day to honor, commemorate and memorialize the 14 young women whose lives were cut short due to a senseless act of misogynistic and gender-based violence. These young women were students at Polytechnique Montréal, women with lives, futures, families, hopes, and dreams. Though it has been over 30 years, the ripples of this violent act still impact us today. December 6th was not an isolated act. Misogyny and gender-based violence and discrimination continue to affect women, girls, and 2SLGBTQIA individuals across so-called Canada and all over the world. The COVID-19 pandemic has been no exception. Many people have faced an increased risk of gender-based violence due to the ongoing global pandemic. Additionally, the violence and harm Indigenous women, girls, and two-spirit people continue to experience within the settler colonial state of Canada is an ongoing genocide, one that often goes unrecognized. As we honor the lives of the 14 women and of everyone who has been affected by gender-based violence, we must remain committed to actively fighting against misogyny in all of its forms. This day serves as a crucial reminder to recognize and dismantle misogyny and gender-based violence in our institutions, spaces, campuses, and within society. Jean-Vierre Bergeron, Hélène Cogan, Nathalie Coteau, Barbara Daniel, Anne-Marie Edward, Maud Havernick, Maurice Lajanier, Maurice Leclerc, Anne-Marie Lemay, Sonia Pelletier, Michelle Richard, Annie saint Arnaud, Annie Tukot, and Barbara Klesnik Widejawicz, and the names of those we may never know. Today, we mourn your loss and renew our commitment to the fight against gender-based oppression in all of its forms. One in five women will experience sexual assault while attending a post-secondary institution. 
the risk of experiencing sexual assault is greater for individuals who are directly impacted by intersecting systems of oppression linked to their identities. Indigenous women are three times more likely to experience violence than non-Indigenous women. One in five transgender, genderqueer, and non-conforming students have experienced sexual assault. Women with disabilities are three times more likely as women without disabilities to experience sexual assault. We know these numbers don't accurately represent the number of victims affected as it only takes into consideration the numbers of reports. The system was not built for survivors, and as long as these systematic barriers exist, these numbers will never truly represent the reality of gender-based violence. Today, it's important to not only recognize those who have survived, but those who have gone missing or lost their lives due to gender-based violence. Hello, bonjour. My name is Katrina Blair. My journey with gender-based violence activism started in 2018 as a volunteer for the Center of Sexual Violence Support and Education here at York. A few years later, I am honored to say that I have been their work-study student for the past year and a half. I am also proud to say I am this year's lead coordinator for the Glennon Women and Trans Center. My journey with activism might have started a few years ago, but my experience with it started long before my undergraduate degree. Reality is, gender-based violence is a crisis happening all across the sector. Post-secondary institution, healthcare system, the legal system, and the list continues. Let's continue the awareness, these actions, to fight gender-based violence after these 16 days. Thank you so much to our colleagues at the York Federation of Students and the Glendon College community. We are always so appreciative of your participation in these very important community events. This concludes our ceremony. Thank you for joining us. Please continue to show your support against gender-based violence by participating in the 16 Days of Activism Against Gender-Based Violence, and you can find information on the website for the Center for Sexual Violence Response, Support, and Education, and supporting organizations that do this important work. This is an issue that affects us all. And it is important that we work together to take action and ensure we provide support wherever we can. As your community members, please remember that you can always reach out for support and or information from the center. We are here for you today and always. Thank you.